We have all dealt with imposter syndrome. I don't know anybody that is successful in life at anything, whether it is a relationship or it is a business or whatever. We have all dealt with imposter syndrome and some of us still with it, me still deal with it, me included. And today on the podcast, I want to talk about some of the things that I do to handle when I feel imposter syndrome, you know, come on and how I felt in the beginning when I had zero success, not to mention out here in these dating streets again, and to not feel like an imposter because I have gotten divorced or I'm 42 with no kids or whatever. So today, let's talk about it. Welcome back to another episode of the King of Kelly podcast. I am excited to be here with you. We are here every single Tuesday when a podcast comes out. And of course, we come out on YouTube on Thursdays. And so I just want to say thank you so much for watching and listening because you were the reason why I do this. And so as you heard me talk about in my intro, we are talking about dealing with imposter syndrome, okay? And uh, if you don't know necessarily what that term means, like let's just do a quick Google search and see what Dr. Google says about imposter syndrome, and then I'll give you my personal thoughts, okay? So let's see, imposter syndrome via Google. Imposter syndrome is the condition of feeling anxious and not and not experiencing success internally, this, despite being high-performing in, in external objective ways. This condition often results in people feeling like a fraud or a phony and doubting their abilities, okay? Now, let's see what Wikipedia says. It says, imposter syndrome, also known as imposter phenomenon, or imposterism is a psychological occurrence when people doubt their skills and talents. Okay, so you saw what the psychologists are saying, what Google is saying and all that. And so let's just kind of talk about, you know, what I think, right? And honestly, I agree with Google. It is, here we are doing all the things that we're doing, knowing what we know, being who we are and all of that, and still feeling like we are not enough it's not enough. I'm not doing enough. You can't be successful. You're not the right one. It's not going to happen for you or whatever. Right. And so like we have all dealt with it. So like if you have dealt with imposter syndrome, I want you to, you know, screenshot this episode and I want you to share it to your Instagram story and tag me. So that way I know that I'm not by myself and you're with me. So when's, when are some of the times when I felt like an imposter? First, first thing I can remember is when I decided that I was going to um, start teaching online about building personal brands. When I first got going, going through divorce, I knew what I knew. I had years of experience years of experience. And I felt like an imposter. I felt like I wasn't supposed to be there, that I was supposed to be in mourning and whatever, that I was supposed to be wallowing in my sorrow. And I could not move like forward in my life from the thing that had just happened to me or whatever. Um, but also I felt like an imposter when I started talking about my relationship with God on social media very shortly after, you know, I felt like, well, I'm not minister so-and-so. I didn't go to Bible school. I don't know the Bible in and out like this person does. You know, I don't hear God or see God the way that this person does, or I don't have this experience or this experience or whatever, right? Um, but then I also had an experience two years ago. So I was living in Redding, California, a very small town, and God invited me to move to San Diego. And he gave me a specific apartment community he wanted me to move into. And it was very high class to me because I had never lived in a community like that. So when I pulled up to it, I was like, oh my God, right? Um, when I toured the property, I felt one way, like, wow, this is amazing, whatever. But when it was time to move in, I started to feel like I did not belong because here I was driving my, it was a 2014, 2014, I think it's 2014 Honda Civic, which was still like fairly new, you know, pulling it into this garage. And I saw Aston Martins. I saw Mercedes. I saw Tesla. I saw all these fancy cars, right? And I saw all these like skinny white people. Now, listen, if you're skinny and white, it's okay to be skinny and white, but that's what I saw. And I was just like, uh, 
what, what, I don't belong here. Right. And then I remember like unpacking and just being like, I just feeling so uncomfortable thinking about going to the pool and just not feeling like it just all these feelings that I was having about not belonging, not supposed to like, not supposed to be there, you know? And it took me a while to finally go, Hey, you belonging in a place to live has nothing to do with what car you drive, how what your body looks like. It has nothing to do with any of that. You're amazing. You want to live in an amazing community. That's that. Now, the community wasn't saying anything. That was me feeling like I did not belong, right? Like when I was teaching about my relationship with God online, nobody was saying anything. That was me and how I felt inadequate, you know, as it pertained to my relationship with God. When I started teaching branding online and feeling like an imposter, like right after my divorce, that was me feeling that way, feeling like everybody was had all these opinions or thoughts about me, but nobody ever really said anything. That was all of me, right? And so like, I know you can relate that there's some part of your life or, or at some part in your life, you were, you had this opportunity or you were in something and you just did not feel like you belonged. Right. Um, I can think about a time when I think maybe a man wanted to pursue me and I just felt like I wasn't good enough. I felt like I needed to be something else or doing something else or whatever in order to be deserving of this man. Like, I know it sounds kind of crazy. Now that was not my ex, but I know it sounds kind of crazy, but that is kind of what happens to us, right? And so, but here is the work that I had to do and am doing, right? One of the things was I had to like really take a look at myself, okay? And, you know, outside of the specific situations, I had to ask myself, how do I really feel about myself? Let that pause. How do I really feel about myself? And I first started with my appearance, like outwardly. How do I feel about my teeth, my hair, my skin, my height, my butt, my gut, my hips, my cellulite, my chin hair, my missing tooth, teeth, how do I really feel about that? I did not feel good about it. I felt like ugly. I mean, that's the best way to put it. And I know you're like, what? I felt very, very ugly, very unattractive, right? And that was my honest feelings. And I couldn't deal with myself or I couldn't go through any type of processes until I was honest, right? I also had to ask myself, how do I feel about myself in terms of being in an environment where people are driving nice cars? And I was like, I don't feel like I belong here because I don't have a nice car, like quote unquote. How do I feel being here? Know that I am brown and I am curvy and my stomach is not flat. And I was like, I feel fat. Okay, that's honest, right? How do I feel being out here with this man who is very successful and is trying to pursue you? How do you feel? I feel like I don't deserve him. I feel like at some point in time, he is going to find somebody better that looks more like this or has that or doesn't have this past or whatever, or has this particular family, right? I had to be honest. And listen, I know that you're listening to this and you're just like, oh my God. But it's not like I had to have this conversation with anybody. I was having this conversation with myself because like, if I'm not honest with myself, then I am not only lying to everybody, but I'm lying to the most important person, which is me. And it, it took me a while before I ever started this exercise because I didn't know the work that I needed to do. I just, I just didn't know. And I did not like any of those answers. Oh my God. I didn't like any of those answers because they were the truth. And you know, they say the truth will set you free, but the truth is also ugly. It is so ugly when you see it. And it's been years and I have been going down this journey. It is still a journey. Like it is still a journey because right now my stomach is sitting out like I'm six months pregnant because I got these fibroids on my uterus and a cyst on my ovaries and I got to get them removed in August. And once they're removed, my stomach shrinks, but they've been this way for a while, right? And growing. And so I have had this stuff that I've just been dealing with, you know, and 
but no matter what, I, I started having these like conversations with myself. I started going like, okay, are you beautiful with or without a big stomach? And I was like, I don't know. I, I, I'm only used to me not having a stomach. And so to me, I am not beautiful with it. And I, and I had to like, be honest with about that, you know? And what started to happen was when I would just dress the way that I normally would dress that like, okay. So I had clothes that did not fit this current body. That did not fit the body that had the more weight, the bigger stomach and whatever. So I wasn't as confident because everything was so tight, right? Like my pants were so tight. My belts were so tight. My dresses, my shirts, everything was so tight. So I did not feel confident because of the tightness. And so finally one day I just decided I'm going to go and buy bigger pants. I'm going to go and buy a bigger belt. I'm going to learn how to dress this body because that I'm not used to, but that I currently have. And when I started buying clothes that actually fit that body, I started to feel better about myself. And I was like, oh, okay. So then I started putting on jewelry. I started putting on perfumes. I started putting on lipstick. And I started feeling better about myself because I wasn't punishing myself trying to fit in the clothes that I just did not fit anymore, right? And so then I started, you know, like I looked at my car and I was like, King, you have not washed this car in a long time. And I was like, I'm going to go get a car wash, but I'm going to go get it detailed. Right. And because it was filthy. And so I got my car detailed and guess what? I felt better about my car because I was taking care of it. I wasn't neglecting it. You know what I mean? I started driving it differently because I was taking care of it. Um, and then what was it? Oh, I got braces. So it's like, I had always had, I had crooked teeth and then straight teeth, had a tooth removed and I got crooked teeth again. So I got braces and my teeth started to straighten. I was like, oh, I'm starting to feel better about myself because I'm getting back to like how I normally look. You know what I mean? And what's again, what started to happen was I started just feeling better about myself in different scenarios and different situations and all that type of stuff. But the first thing that I had to deal with was me, you know, because you're not going to feel confident in certain spaces. If you already feel, uh, uh, if you already feel, um, uh, uh, what's the word self, what's the word, uh, insecure out, outside of those spaces. If you already feel super insecure outside of those spaces, those spaces are just going to make it worse, <laughs> right? That's what I started to learn. Those spaces or environments or opportunities or whatever are just going to make it worse because you are insecure, right? And I did not realize how insecure that I was because I wasn't used to being insecure so that I thought, right? And so I've been on this journey of being like, okay, like, okay, like how do we feel more secure, right? Um, and then what I had to do was I had to start going like, what value am I placing on things? So do I have high value for people to have nice cars, nice houses and skinny bodies, right? Or do I have high value for people who are just good people, good human beings, right? And that one took me a while because I was just like, well, you know, I'm just like, I'm around these people and I'm like, oh, this is, yeah, this is A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And this, yeah, yeah, yeah. Until I started going like, Ugh, I don't even really like you guys. Not all of them, you know, but I don't really even like how you make me feel. I feel like I have to do more or be more in terms of like, I have to have this and I have to have this and I have to have this conversation and I, whatever. Yeah, I just started to start to feel that way until I started getting around people that were like my norm, right? That were people who were just like good people, like right? whether they had a bunch of money or not, whether they had a fancy car or not, whether they got massages and facials and all that or not. It's like, it wasn't until I started going like, you know, yeah, I get laser hair removal because I'm hairy, but we ain't got to always talk about that. Yeah, I get a massage, but we don't have to, I'm like, oh, we get to talk about spades and poker and others like, yeah, this is, this actually feels a lot better than this does because this just feels materialistic. This doesn't feel like real friendship. I don't feel like I can fully be myself, you know, here, but I feel like I can just be my, my total self, like right here, you know? And, but I, I had to go through those processes in order for that to happen. And so now I'm starting to be in spaces with people that make a whole lot of money, right? And I'm like, 
how do I feel? I'm like, oh, it feels a little uncomfortable, but it like, okay. So these people have money, but they just don't act like it's just like normal. You know what I mean? And so I started going like, oh, so I, I can be around people that make a lot of money as long as they are like chill. <laughs> they feel like Southern chill people. You know what I mean? They don't make me feel like I need to get the latest or whatever. You know what I mean? Um, but so like, but I had to have my own moment of like realization, like nobody could do it for me. I had to start this period of the work and it, it required me to be brutally honest with myself. And so I know you hear yourself as I'm talking about myself and I want to ask you like, have you asked yourself why you feel like an imposter? Like, have you actually gone deep and like gone back, 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 back and really said, why do I actually feel this way about this or in this environment or when I'm at this job or I'm like applying for this interview or I'm like speaking at this event or I'm applying to speak at this event or when I'm working with this client or whatever, or I'm, whatever, you know what I mean? Like, I want you to ask yourself the questions of what is actually happening with you, because no matter what I say here today, you're watching on YouTube or you're listening, no matter what I say about me and my life and whatever, you, it doesn't change for you. You don't evolve and grow and mature until you ask yourself these hard questions. They don't feel good. They don't. They don't feel good asking the questions, hearing the answers, writing down the answers and seeing them on a piece of paper does not feel good. But, you know, I always say that either you're growing or you're dying. Okay. Either you're growing or you're dying and growth sometimes is fun and awesome. And sometimes it is painful. Sometimes it looks like us really evaluating what is going on. What are we doing? What are we thinking? What are we feeling? How are we behaving? Who are we associating with? You know, sometimes it really, really looks like doing that to really get to, you know, where we really want to get to. So like, I want an amazing man. I want a man who is self-aware, who values therapy, who values post personal growth, who challenges me. But what that means is that he is going to challenge me, which means that I could get triggered by him, which means that I could be pushed in a way that I have never been pushed before or where I don't like, right? He may say things that I don't want to hear or I don't agree with or whatever that is. And so in order for me to like, because I'm an awesome person myself, right? But if I'm saying this is what I want, then I have to like allow myself to have that. So I'm going to challenge in, in him and whatever, but the same is going to happen. And so for me, I'm like, okay, like if that's what I say that I want, then it's really important for me to stay on the journey of growth because he's going to want the same. He's going to want somebody that is growing, that will challenge him and that will be mature or what, you know what I'm saying? And same thing in friendship. My friends are going to want a, someone who's growing and maturing, someone that is reliable, uh, someone who is, you know, or whatever, you know what I'm saying? Um, so, so the journey is not always pretty. It's not always fun, um, but it is necessary. Okay. So I want to, I want to hear from you. So if this, if this has been a blessing to you and you're watching on YouTube, please let me know in the comments. Uh, those of you guys listening on the podcast, the only way you can, I know you, uh, that you hear this or you feel about this is you have to write it in the, um, in the, um, and the, what's you call thing? The recommendation, what's the thing? The reviews. You have to write it in the reviews or you have to tell me on social media, on Instagram or Facebook. Like, cause I know you're listening. I can see that you're listening, um, but I would love to know it. Okay. So let me know what you got from this episode, how you felt about it, what you're going to do to make sure that you can do the work of identifying why you feel like an imposter and how you can, are planning on growing and maturing.